It's here. Apple just released the new M5 powered iPad Pro. Here's what's new and why those changes matter. Real quick, before we get into it, if you want to keep up to date with the latest Apple news and reviews, hit that subscribe button. We're a year and a half after the launch of the M4 iPad Pro. The M4 model was a significant overhaul with a new radical thinner design, that landscape camera, and powerful Apple Silicon. With the M5 version, rumors were clear. There would be no redesign. Instead, it would be focused on performance. And that is what Apple delivered with almost every aspect of the internals upgraded. Starting out with the star of the show, the M5 chip. The M5 is launching in an updated Vision Pro. Full video on that I have linked here, as well as the MacBook Pro. The M5 is a 10-core CPU chip with a 10-core GPU. For that CPU, it's an average upgrade. About 10% single-core increase and 15% on the multi-core over the M4. Of course, if you're coming from an older chip, an older iPad, it's an even bigger leap. Apple is pitching this primarily as an AI and graphics jump. It uses new neural accelerators to increase the AI performance by three and a half times compared to the M4. That is substantial, especially as third-party apps start tapping into local models with iPadOS 26. More specifically, graphics-wise, the M5 has enhanced shader cores in its next-generation GPU, which means 30% faster graphics performance. It has new third generation hardware accelerated ray tracing, which is great for games and results in a 45% boost for those titles. Personally, I am very eager to try these new graphics out and see how smooth some of these high end games run on this. I am hopeful, hopeful that this results in more AAA titles coming directly to iPad. Moving through the internals, the top models still have 16 gigs of memory. But the entry level models, those with 256 gigs or 512 gigs of storage, now come with 12 gigs instead of only 8. It's also faster memory, as the M5 has 153 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, which is about a 30% increase over the prior 120 gigabyte per second threshold. As Apple added the new windowed multitasking with iPadOS 26, this could go a long way. It's going to make moving between apps much more seamless as it's able to retrieve data from memory and restore apps more quickly. It may even allow you to keep more apps and windows open at once. Storage options remain largely the same. iPad Pro starts with 256 and goes up to 2 terabytes. It's faster though, with up to two times the read and write speeds previously offered. As people start to do more real work on iPad, like video production, that storage speed is going to be pretty crucial. The M5 isn't the only new chip to be found inside of the updated iPad Pros. Apple's also putting in its twin pair of wireless chips. It has its C1X modem for cellular and its N1 networking chip. These are huge changes that I have been waiting for for a while. So the C1X, which is found in the iPhone Air, is Apple's newest in-house modem. It yields 50% faster data speeds for iPad Pro, but at the same time, it is 30% more power efficient. That is nuts to me because it's both faster and uses less power at the same time. When you do a lot of cellular data, it's also going to yield better battery life compared to the cellular version of the M4 iPad Pro. Even better though is the N1, Apple's first networking chip, which is in all of the new iPhones, not just the Air. This gives us Bluetooth 6, up from Bluetooth 5.3. Nah, not, not a huge change. But then we finally get Wi-Fi 7 instead of Wi-Fi 6E. Such a long time coming, and I'm so eager to test out speeds for that in comparison to the Wi-Fi 6E version. Apple says specifically it's going to do really well on 5 gigahertz networks. So yeah. The N1 also finally adds a thread support. This is perfect for smart home nerds like me, as it's basically the fastest way to control smart home devices that support it. The port, of course, is still USB-C with support for Thunderbolt. But Apple did increase charging speeds here. It now supports fast charging. In just over 30 minutes, you'll have 50% charge. This can be done with Apple's new power adapter or any sufficiently high wattage one. When connecting to a display to the Type-C port, it supports 4K 120Hz and Adaptive Sync. Adaptive Sync, basically the same thing as VRR or Variable Refresh Rate. 
on monitors that support that, they adapt the refresh rate to the rate of the GPU. This helps your graphics line up better and you don't end up with what's kind of called tearing. This can be especially problematic when uh, playing games and different parts of different frames show on the screen at the same time. I'm also willing to, how much, how much, how much you want to bet that the new studio display also has VRR or adaptive sync? I'm willing to take bets. Now, we didn't get the rumored second front-facing camera, but otherwise, this is a solid update. The screen still looks great. You can still get that nano texture option. I mean, Apple literally increased the performance of the wireless specs, the storage, the memory, the processor, the GPU, the neural engine. It may not be enough to sway M4 users, but if you're still holding on to an M1 or M2 model, this may be hard to resist. Let me know what you think of this upgrade down below in the comments. And if you want to keep up to date with all of Apple's new releases, make sure you give me a follow, and I'll see you all in the next video.